Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the extended version of analytical chemistry today. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think we had a pretty good class today, so good job, everyone. Um, I think we covered a lot, and I, I, th I think everybody understood what was going on. So in this video, um, uh, I'm going to do an example of making a calibration curve because uh, basically everything we talked about today was like the the theory and the the steps in making a graph right and figuring out what the the uh, the line of best fit is for a graph and the statistics behind that right well in this video will be uh, an example of how we use a line of best fit in real life and that's with a calibration curve right so I'll start out by saying right constructing calibration curve Oops, messed up there already. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Constructing a calibration curve, right? And generally, the reason why we construct calibration curves is so that we can determine the unknown concentration of something, right? And I know I went over this in class already, but I just want to do it again, just kind of give me a good starting point, right? Uh, you know from Gen Chem, there's this thing called Beer's Law. And Beer's Law is A equals B, E, C, right? And so the A is the absorbance using some kind of spectral photometer, uh, like a SPEC-20, like you did in Gen Chem class, right? The C is the concentration, right? And then the B is the path length. I think I spelled path length wrong, but you get the point, right? And then the E right here is the molar extinction coefficient, which I'll just call the MEC for short, right? The molar extinction coefficient. Uh, and so the really cool thing about Beer's Law that blows, blows everybody's minds away, like you did today in class, or blew your mind away in class today, right? Is that we can apply a Y equals MX plus B line to uh, Beer's Law, right? Where A is the Y value, and then X is the C value, right? Where X is the, uh, is the concentration, Y is the absorbance. And then the BE is the slope, right? Is the slope, right? And as I discussed already in in a, in a class, the B here, which is the y-intercept, is usually approximately zero, right? It's approximately zero, um, and and so that's why you don't have that term representative in Beer's law, right? And so and and what that means in real life is that whenever you take a blank right and you put it into a spectral photometer and you zero it or you blank the spectral photometer out you're essentially telling the spectral photometer that this should be zero because this is my sample my standard sample that has no end light in it right and so no end light should be zero and that's why in beer's law the b uh, uh not the b for a path length but the b for y intercept in uh in the y equals mx plus b equation doesn't really isn't really represented in, in beer's law right but the rest is, okay? And so what that means then is that we can do go through and, and, and if we have, uh, if we create a line, right, uh, with known standards of concentration or amounts, quantities, and then we have an unknown, we can get the absorbance of the unknown, right, and that's some number, and we plug in for y, and what we can do then is solve for x, right? Plug in for y, and then solve for x. And when you do solve for x, x is the concentration, and that's how you get the that's how you get the uh, uh, the unknown concentration on the sample, right? So uh, let's look at the data. And like I was saying before in class, this data comes from using the Lowry method, uh, also known as a Lowry protein assay. Lowry protein assay. There's several different assays you can use to do protein determination, like to figure out how much protein you have in a sample. Um, like I said, there's the BCA, there's the Bayou Rat assay, there's the Bradford assay, and there's the Lowry assay. And they all have their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, the particular strength of the protein, the Lowry protein assay, is that it's, it's sensitive, so it has a very wide uh, range, right? 
And so, just for you know, just for fun, we're gonna let's talk about what the what, what's actually happening with the the uh, the Lowry assay, right? Um, we have an amino acid, right, which is the backbone of all proteins. Amino acids are, and this is what they generally look like, right? And this part right here is called the peptide bond. Right, and so that's why when you're talking about a protein, usually they're referred to as polypeptides, right? It should look very familiar to most of you because you've had this already in organic chemistry. The peptide bond is also known as an amide bond, right? And a part of the amide bond is this nitrogen here that has a lone pair of electrons, right? And this lone pair of electrons uh, likes, to, likes to do things, right? And so when you have an amide, right, or a polypeptide chain or a protein, they're all, you know, you know, we're using them synonymously here in this example, right? You combine it with some copper two in a very basic solution, right, in a very basic solution, and what happens is that the copper two gets reduced to copper one. And when it gets reduced to copper one, the peptides like to surround it in what we call a coordination complex. Some of you that are in advanced organic right now should know all about coordination complexes. And I'm just gonna, for sake of space, I'm just gonna draw the nitrogen part, right? Okay, and what happens is that what happens is that the coordination complex means that the nitrogens like to surround the the uh, the uh, from the peptide bonds like to surround the copper, right? <coughs> Excuse me. After it does that, we'll add in this thing called Follins reagent, right? It's actually Follins Coulier something, I can't even, it's a French word, I can't really even say it, right, reagent? But the interesting about that is that it has tungsten and it has, has tungsten and molybdate in it. And why is that important? Well, when that add, when you do that, you actually get an output of color. And that color is kind of a, is, a, is interesting because you can actually detect it at five, uh, 750 nanometers of, of absorbance, wavelength of absorbance. So when you're looking at a spectrophotometer, like a SPEC-20 and it asks you what wavelength you want it to detect at, you set it to the wavelength of 500, or sorry, 750 nanometers, and it can to detect the product of, uh, of this little uh, assay that we're doing here to detect proteins, right? And so uh, it, it grants, again, <laughs> sorry, it, uh, 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 you can reason through then that, that the more protein you have, the more intense the, uh, the absorption will be at uh, uh, 750 nanometers, right? Which is what it means, what, what Beer's Law says here, right? Beer's Law says here, the higher the concentration, the higher the absorbance, right? And that's why you're able to to uh, to uh, use Beer's Law to figure out unknown concentrations, right? It's a proportional thing, direct proportional thing. So let's look at some, let's look at some data, which we put this data on the board today already, but I'll write it out again today, I'll write it out again here in this video, right? So from our Lowry protein assay, we got the, uh, we have sample, right? And that was in microliters, I'm sorry, micrograms, micrograms of protein. And we had 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25, okay? And then I always like to do things in triplicate. So this would be the absorbances of all these standards. These are the standards, by the way, right? Standard protein concentrations. I better write that out there so you guys remember. Standards. <laughs> I just put STD again. We're using, we're using a lot of these uh, these more biological terms anyway, right? So we'll use standard STD, right? Those are the standards. And the absorbance for three replicates, because I always do things in threes. And so my numbers were 0 0.099, 0 0.099, and um, 
0 0.100. Okay. And then my next number is, I'm going to try to draw a line here so that I can uh, keep all my numbers straight. Draw a line. Okay. Do one for five. Do one for ten. Do one for fifteen. Do one for twenty. Oops. We've already talked about this. You don't need that. <laughs> do one for twenty. And here's a one for twenty-five. Okay. So then let's go ahead and go through all the rest of the numbers. I have zero point uh, zero point one eight five for that one. Zero point one eight seven. And then 0 0.188. And then for the next one, for 10 micrograms of protein, I have 0 0.282, uh, 0 0.272, 0 0.272 again. And then I have for 15 micrograms of protein of the standard, we get 0 0.392. 0 0.345 then 0 0.347 and then for the uh, next one which is 20 micrograms of standard protein is the 0 0.425 0 0.425 again and then 0. 430 and I just got an email. I wonder if that's important. It's probably not important. Um, and then for the last standard, we got 0 0.483, then we got 0 0.488, and then we have 0 0.496. Right, okay. And so the first thing I wanted to point out to you, right, is the fact that when you look at the zero sample right here, right, that zero sample right there. Uh, remember what I said right here? The y-intercept should be approximately zero. But when I took the, the, the absorbance of the zero analyte, right, because the blank is always the zero analyte, right, um, uh, sample, uh, it actually got an absorbance of 0 0.99 and 0 .99, 0 0.099 and 0 0.099 and 0 0.100. That's weird. It's not zero, right? And so this is typically what happens here is that someone forgot to uh, either zero out slash blank the spectrometer, right? Or the spectrometer is not capable of doing that, okay? Uh, or something like that. Most likely someone just forgot to zero out the spectrometer. So it's an easy fix, right? And the easy fix is to just do the, uh, the, uh, the corrected values, right? And the corrected values, I'll just put over here, which is the last thing we did in class today, right? C corrected absorbance values. Okay, those are the correct observance values. Uh, and it's just literally going to be the uh, absorbance minus the zero absorbance. Okay, minus the zero absorbance. Okay, and so pretty simple here. Just do some subtraction. Um, I'm going to draw some more lines over just so I can keep everything straight. It's amazing I'm able to use this ruler on my iPad screen. I thought I was going to go all kinds of crazy. And then a couple more lines here. Uh -oh, what happened? It's not drawing anymore. Why does my, my why does my pencil do that sometimes? There it goes. And then the last one here. There we go. Okay. I'm kind of tilting there, but that's okay. <coughs> that's okay. All right. So after I do my subtraction of all the values, 
I should get something like that's pretty much zero here. What I actually got was, um, let's see here. Yeah, pretty much zero. So zero point zero zero. What I got actually here was zero point zero zero, like three, which is basically zero. If you got something else, that's okay. It's just a rounding, a, a very small rounding error, right? When it get, get, gets out to like four decimal points that much, that that many digits, it doesn't matter. I would just consider that zero. But just to be complete, zero point zero zero three, right, and then. Um, and then 0 0.0007 and so you're probably wondering uh, how am I able to get the smaller like four digits with the numbers only have three digits it's because when I did this calculation in my calculator I actually wrote out more digits um, I calculated more digits so if you just drop the three the three and the seven there right it's basically just zero right so don't worry about it that's not a big deal okay um, Next, then, uh, for the next numbers, yes, I would just consider all these zero. Just get, just drop the three, and all these will be zero, okay? Uh, and then the next one here, again, just, you know, I have, I used, I wrote on the board the numbers, right? And I had more digits on my calculator when I did the calculation, so it's okay. These were going to be 0 0.085, 0 0.087, 0 0.088 and the next one was going to be 0 0.182 0 0.172 and then 0 0.172 okay I'm going to skip this one right here and I'll tell you why in a minute but the one after that was 0 0.242 and then 0 0.247, okay? And then for the next row, for the, the 20 micrograms of protein standard, we had 0 0.325. And then we had um, 0 0.325 again and then 0 0.33. And then for the last one, 25 micrograms of protein, 0 0.383, 0 0.388, and then 0 0.396. Okay. And so here we go. We have all of our data corrected now, okay? Uh, the the interesting thing that we can do here, like uh, one, I don't know if I covered this or not, but one of the the statistical parameters you can do is actually called the range, right? And the range is literally the highest number minus the lowest number, highest minus lowest in the set, right? For the range, and so. It just tells you the the spread, and we've talked about the spread before, right? Uh, uh, that was that W that we use in in a, in a, I believe it was the W that we used in in the Q test, uh, but I don't I don't use the Q test a lot, so I can't remember specifically. I mean, I showed you what the Q test was because it's another test you can do, but I, I would prefer you did the Grubbs test anyway. Okay, so uh, the range here for uh, for the the uh, uh, or this right here for the uh, zero was 0 0.001, right? And then the spread here, the range here was 0 0.003. Those are pretty small, so that's good, right? The range here is 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.0. This is what happens when I write too small. I'm going to cross it out and write it again. The range here was 0 0.010, okay? And then the range for the next one, so that's still pretty small, still same order of magnitude basically, pretty close anyway. The next one here is 0 
Huh, interesting. This range is actually 047. Hmm, let's put a pin in that real quick. I'll put a pin in that by putting a question mark there. All right, and then this next one here is 0. 0.0005. 0 and this next one here was 0.00, that's right, 0 0.013. Okay, so wow, when you look at the 0. 47 that range is way bigger than the ranges of everything else right the ranges of everything else so when you look at that data you can look at that data and see what number is actually causing that and the number that's causing that is this number right here the 0 0.9392 okay and so what you can do is you can actually do the Krebs test or the Q test right and see if that number is an outlier right and so for the purposes of this example I'm already I've already considered an outlier Right, and so I'm actually not even going to worry about it in the graph, right? So that's why I put that little dash there for that in the corrected values, right? I'm not even going to worry about that because it's 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 really really different from everything else, okay? All right, so now that we have our values all written out, uh, the values that we'll use for our calibration curve, right, uh, will be all these values, right? But you'll see that's going to be kind of interesting in a minute here, right? Um, so let's go ahead and draw a curve. I'll draw a curve over here. Okay, and it looks it'll look exactly the same way I did the one on the board, which is five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Okay, and then um, over here, I think I ran out of room here. I'm gonna delete or erase that plug-in and solve thing so I can. I have more space real quick here. I don't have to draw it all over again. But you should know that by now, so it's all good. Change it back to the pen. I'm doing the light blue today, so I'll do light blue. We'll continue this line all the way up here. Okay, there we go. Now I have room. Okay, so 0.005. Point one zero, oh, point one five, point two zero. Oh, oh, I'm already messing up here. The lines are not lining up with the thing. Let me erase that dude again. I'll put a little bit of some. I'll put a little more space in between each one. I don't think I put enough space. That's a problem. And don't worry, like when you're doing this on your paper too, same thing, you know, you can always delete these lines and draw the graph again. Okay, I think that's good. I like where my point zero five is. I'm gonna leave that where it is, but I'll definitely put a bigger gap in between. There we go. 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, Zero point two five, zero point three zero, and what was my highest number after corrected? It was point three nine six. So then we have to go up to zero point three five, right there, and then up to zero point four zero. Okay, so there's my graph, right? Or there's at least my axes, 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 right? And so this will be, the x-axis axis will be protein in micrograms. And then the y-axis will be absorbance. And remember absorbance uh, here is at um, 750 nanometers, right, under spec 20. Okay, so let's, let's just graph this thing out here, right? And remember, you know, we can graph it out and then we, we don't even have to really use the graph to figure out any of our values uh, because we have what we need to figure out what the slope of the line is from the data that we have because we did that in the last, uh, uh, in, uh, during class today, right? The beginning of class today. That's what we talked about during the beginning of class, right? And so, um, uh, but I'm just gonna draw the graph just for fun, okay? So we'll go to the first one right here, right? Where I have, zero and then it's all zeros basically so my first dot is going to be very close to zero right there and then at point five 
I got 0.085, right? So it's right there below, right? 0.087 and 0.088, so they're basically right on top of each other, right? The three of them, the three dots are basically right on top of each other. And then, so that's a good sign. And then the next one is for the 10 micrograms. And at 10 micrograms, my number is at 0.182. So we're going here. And again, the dots are right on top of each other, right? 0 0.182, 0 0.72, 0 0.172, right? So they're all on top of each other, except that that 182 is a slightly higher than everything else, but the other two are on top of each other, okay? And then it doesn't have to be perfect. And then for the, for the 15, right? Remember, I got rid of the one of the 15s that was corrected because it was definitely an outlier, right? Or for the purpose of this experiment here, or this example, it is an outlier. You can go through the graph test to make sure it is, but just for the purpose of this, it's an outlier, so I got rid of it. You can see why I'll get, I got rid of it in a second. We'll go with the uh, 0.42 and 0.47, sorry, 0.242 and 0.247. So 15, basically at the 0.25 both of them right there if I had gone with the if it had not gotten rid of the the 0.29 right so say I had the the, the 0.392 here and I corrected it and then we would have had a 0.292 there right the 0.292 number would have been all the way up here right near the 0.3 and so already that looks like it's going to be an outlier right there right questionable point no discard possibly right discard it possibly for the purposes of this example again I'm just going to discard it so we can get through the example but in real life what you would do is you're going to go through and do the grubs test and see if it is an outlier okay so next one uh, for 20 for our corrected is 325. So 325 is right in between 30 and 35. So right here. Right. And it's 325, 325, 330. They're all on top of each other again, pretty much. And then for the very last one, 25, um, we have 383. Hmm, 383. Looks like it's starting to flatten out a little bit here. So here's 0 0.40, right? So 3.83 is over here. And then 3.88, just slightly above that. And then 3.96, we're just slightly above that. Weird. So if we were to draw a line, and remember we want our line to go through zero, you don't have to, sometimes people will do this thing where they force the line through zero, but you don't have to do that. You really don't have to force it through zero. If you go through the the, the the process of doing corrected values, uh, absorbance values, and and delete the the uh, the um, zero absorbance values from the other absorbance values, and get your corrected values right. You really don't have to force it to go through zero because now, once you do the corrected values, it's pretty much in zero anyway. Pretty close, close enough, right? And so I'll draw my line. See, so there's my line of best fit going through zero, zero, right? And all of them were pretty much in line with each other, <laughs> except for this one questionable point that I had up here for one of the 15 micrograms, and also these. These are way off the line. What's going on here? Right, what's going on there? Well, what this means here is that once you get up to 25 micrograms, right, you've gone beyond the linear range. of this assay. Okay, you've gone, you've gone beyond the linear range of this assay. Uh, and what that means is that any numbers or any concentrations that you get, or sorry, let me do that again, any absorbances that you get for any concentrations that are above 20 micrograms are inaccurate and you shouldn't use that, right? And so your linear range here should really be uh, something from here to here, right? 
right? That's what you should, that, that should be what your linear range is. This is your linear range. Right? So if you're beyond the linear range, then you're, you're, you can't use that number, right? So commonly what will happen then is, uh, you know, if you have a very concentrated sample, you'll get an absorbance that's outside the linear range, and you can't use that absorbance. And that's what I'm talking about earlier when I was talking about if you get an absorbance of more than one, right, or an absorbance of three, notice these are decimal point numbers in our absorbances, if you get one or three or something like that, I mean, you're way outside the linear range. Right, if you're up up that high, okay, so you definitely can't use those numbers. And in those cases, what I would do is I would dilute the sample, right, either by five or by ten, right, um, or something like that, and and then do the absorbance again, get that concentration, and then back calculate what the the original concentration was using M1 V1. That's what I would do, right. So you you should never use an absorbance that is outside the linear range of your assay. And for our brow, for our Lowry protein assay, the linear range is between zero and uh, is between zero and uh, twenty micrograms, right? So, and that corresponds to um, uh, less than 0.35 micrograms of protein in the sample. So, make sure that you you are when you're doing this, you're always within the linear range of your samples, right? Of your standards. Okay, so that's good stuff. Now that we have all this stuff, right, we have all this stuff, I know you just drew this line, but what's the equation of this line? What's the equation of this line? Well, you already know how to do that because we talked about that in class earlier today, right? You had the different, uh, <laughs> different, uh, you had the different uh, 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 equations for, for slope of a line, of the, of the best fit line, and you had uh, this little equation for the, the y-intercept, right, of the best fit line, and just just as a review, I'll write the quote, the the, the equations here, right, right now, the the slope of the best fit line, right, and I'll try to write it correctly this time, is the n times the sum of x i. No, I don't know why I put a one there. <laughs> Let me erase that one real quick. There we go. Back to my light blue today. I'm in a light blue mood. All right. Sum of xi times yi, 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 minus the sum of xi times the sum of yi. Right? All divided by d, big D. Right, and then the y-intercept of that line of best fit is the sum of x i squared times the sum of x y y i minus the sum of the product of x i y i all that multiplied by the sum of x i all divided by big d right and if you recall the equation for big d is n times the sum of x i squared minus the sum of X. Oh, messed that up. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. Fixed the sum of the X I's squared. Right, and so you're definitely you're just going to go through this entire thing again, like you did with the the uh, the uh, example that we did in class, right? And so um, uh, you have three replicates here, and what you can do, right? What you can do then is the 
um, uh, what you can do is then use the uh, the average of those 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 replicates, right? The average of those three replicates, and so um, this would represent your xi right here, because you only have one of those right there. Okay, the average of these three right here is your y i, right? Okay, and then you just continue your graph, right? You'll just continue, not your graph, your chart, right? And put your chart, make your chart have the, uh, make your chart have the, uh, the uh, xi times uh, yi, right? And then also the xi squared. Figure out the sums of each of those two, right? And then, just like we did in class today, use that and the equations to figure out the slope of the line. And then once you figure out the slope of the line, you can figure out what the VD is, <laughs> or the DI, same thing, the vertical deviation. And then also do the DI squared. And then once you get the sum of DI squared from all that, right, then you can do the, uh, the statistics and all that, right? So once you get the equation, right, once you figure out those numbers, right, those lines, those things, the numbers you should get from this the slope here after you do the the equation the same way you did with the first example I showed you with the simple numbers right the only difference here is that you're gonna be using the average absorbance of the three replicates that's what you usually do you should get a slope of uh, 0 0.0163 okay okay um, and then you should get a B, right, or a y-intercept of 0 0.004, right? And so your slope of the line, without any uncertainty yet, should be y equals 0 0.016, right? It's going to be it's going to be six three, but one six because I haven't shown you what the uncertainties are yet, right? So let's just write out six three yeah. times x plus the zero point zero zero four, right? So knowing all of that, you can use the equations to figure out what the uh, uh, the equations I gave you earlier, right? To figure out what the sy is. The standard deviation of the y, the standard deviation of the slope, and the standard deviation of the uh, of the y-intercept, right? Uh, and so those equations, just as a reminder, were the square root for s y was the square root of the sum of the d i or the v d squared divided by n minus 2 and then for this the standard deviation of the slope that should have been sy times the square root of n divided by big D and then for the standard deviation of the y-intercept that's sy times the square root of um, the square root of the sum of xi squared all divided by big D right and so when you go through and do those do those equations the numbers you should get are 0 0.005 and then uh, for the for Y sorry for Y it should be 0 0.005 and then using that 0 0.005 for the standard deviation of the slope you should get 0 0.0002, right? And then uh, for the uh, y-intercept should be uh, 0 0.002, okay? And so now you can rewrite your standard equation or your, your best fit equation, right? To be y equals, and how many decimal points do we have for the, uh, for the, uh, 
this year. That's the same. Yeah, we have four decimal points there, and we have four decimal points there. So it's going to be 0 0.0163 plus or minus 0 0.0002 times x plus the uh, plus the B, which was the, where's that? I lost it. There it is. 0 0.004, right? Three digits there, three digits there, so we're good. That's plus or minus 0 0.002. Okay? And so that's your completed, that's your completed, uh, including uncertainty, uh, Y equals MX plus B equation for the line of best fit. Okay? So just, just to review that, this right here, notice that this is very, very close to zero, right? And so that's this point right there, the y-intercept, right? That's this point. And then the slope here, 0 0.0163, that's the slope here, right? Right, and that's the slope of that line, okay? Good stuff, good stuff, okay? So then the question is, then the question is this. Say I have an unknown sample, right? Say I have an unknown sample. I'm gonna go to the next page now so you can work the unknown sample. Um, there we go, okay? So the question then is, determine the amount of protein for a sample with an average absorbance of 0 0.373, right? And this was from four replicates. I know it's more than I usually do, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. Four replicates, right? And what is the associated Uncertainty. What is the associated uncertainty, right? Well, the first part is super easy because we already know that we have we already know that we have the uh, there's the the equation of the line, right? And oh, by the way, just so that we we know we're clear too. Um, the data that we used for the calibration curve is only this data here, right? And we left this data out down here, right? We didn't leave it out, it's on the graph, but it's not a part of the line. And the reason why it's not, just as a reminder, is that it's outside the linear range. You would not have even known that had you not tried to draw the line first, right? If you had not tried to draw the line first. And so, really our calibration curve which I'll dub CC for short, only contains those data points, right? The, uh, the, the uh, uh, standard concentrations, or sorry, the standard amounts of protein from zero to 20 na na microliters, okay? All right, so we have our equation right here of the line. Good stuff, good stuff, right? We also have our equation of the line here with the associated uncertainty. And now we can use that to figure out what the concentration is or the number, the amount of protein is, there is, amount of protein that there is in this unknown sample, right? So I'll just rewrite it again over here so we don't forget. Uh, and I'm gonna forget, so I'm gonna go back and forth. Y equals, uh, I refer at the slope, what was the slope? 0 0.0163, 0 0.0163. And like I said, I always figure out the concentration first and then I'll figure out the uncertainties later, okay? And so, 
no, it's a little too far. There we go. And that's x plus 0 0.004, right? Three zeros? Yes, three zeros. Or three decimal points, rather, is what I meant to say. Okay. And so we have that as our, our equation in the line, right? From this, from this calibration curve, that's great. Right from the curve that we just made right here. This is good stuff, right? And so all we have to do then is plug in this number, the absorbance average from four replicates, into the y, right? But is that all we have to do? What did we do before? Well, remember, right, based on our calibration curve, we have to actually get these corrected values right here, right? We have to get these corrected values. And so, if you're going to treat the standards with corrected values, you also have to treat your unknowns with the corrected values, right? So really, what it should be then is this. The y is the 0 0.373 minus the 0 0.99, oops, sorry, 0 0.099, right? And the way I did that is because that's an average, right? And I just did an average of this, uh, of these three replicates, right? I did the average of the, of the three zero replicates right here, right? And so that's just a rounded version of the average, 0 0.099, right? And that equals 0 0.0163, right, x plus 0 0.004, and literally, oh, that looks like a 6, I wonder why my 4s look like 6s, anyway, so all you have to do now is solve for this, right, and you'll get the unknown concentration or unknown amount of protein in the sample, right, and so when I do that, what I get is x equals approximately... 16.50 micrograms of protein. Okay, that's what I get. So the thing though is that we still need to figure out what the, uh, we still need to figure out what the uncertainty is, right? And though you figured out the uncertainty of the line, right, for the slope and the, uh, for the slope and the y-intercept, uh, with those respective equations, there's a different equation you use to figure out the the uncertainty for a uh, a a, 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 uh, a result from a y equals mx plus b equation, right? When you plug in a y and you get an x out of it, right? And so what we what that is is that basically you're trying to determine what the standard deviation is or the uncertainty is in the x direction. How do you do that? Okay. Well, we have an equation for that course and the equation is this the sx right equals the sy from the previous thing right divided by the absolute value of the slope multiplied by the square root of 1k 1 over k plus 1 over n right plus the y minus y i squared all divided by uh, sorry it's not y i it's actually let me erase this it's not y i it's actually It's actually the average, minus the average of all the y's, right, divided by the slope squared, okay, the slope squared times the sum of the xi's minus the average of the x's, right, squared. So this one, this equation is a little bit more complicated, but let me walk you through each each one, each of the things. So this SY here, right? 
this SY is the same SY that we calculated before, right? Uh, over here, the point zero zero five, right? The standard deviation of the Y. So that's what you would put there, right? So that's the 0 0.005, and that was the, oh, I already used STD as for standard. So we'll do STDEV for standard deviation of Y, right? We solved that before, okay? This is easy, this is just the slope right here. And so in our equation of the line, our slope is this right here, right? So that's uh, 0 0.0163, right? And this is the slope. It says absolute value of the slope there. So if you have a negative slope, you'll have to make it the absolute value of that negative slope, which is just the positive value, okay? Uh, now we're going to enter some things that are a little bit, you know, you don't really know about, right? Because, uh, for example, there's this thing K here. This K is not the same as the equilibrium constant K. This K is the K for the number of replicates you had for the, uh, for a single or an individual uh, 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 reading or measurement of unknown, right? So from the question, I say that you have four replicates, right? Uh, you know, or if it was not from the question, right, you can always take it from the, the table here where we have three replicates, but just for some reason, right, we did four replicates of the unknown here, okay? So this, this the thing you would put here is four. Okay, so this is the number of replicates. Okay, number of replicates, okay? And then this n is an n that you already know, right? This is just the total number of uh, of, uh, of standard values that we that we had, right? And so if you go back to here and you count up all the different values we have, right, uh, in the standard curve or in the calibration curve, right? Uh, and so it would just be the ones here that I've circled, I've bracketed here, right? So not the stuff that's for standard 25 micrograms and not the one that I left out here because it was a really big number, right? And so that is actually going to be 14. There are 14 values there, right? So that's the number of uh, number of, of uh, x values. Number of x values, okay? This right here is the slope again, which is the 0 0.0163, right, the slope. Okay. And then, sadly, um, let's see here. I don't have this in a chart yet, right? So what this, I don't have this value, the, the sum of the xi minus the mean or the average of x's squared, I don't have that as a, as a value yet, I mean, as a in the chart as something already calculated. So you're gonna have to do that by hand, right? And so literally what you would do here is, these are all the individual x values, okay? Right? And what that is, 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 uh, is gonna be the zero, zero. So three zeros, right? Because you had three, a triplicate of each one. And then you had three fives. You had three tens, right? And then you had, uh, yeah, so it was 15 where we dropped one. So there's only two 15s. Right, and then you just had three twenties. Right, so those are all the individual x values, right? And then for each one of those, you have to subtract the mean, right? Which I don't remember what the mean is, so I'm just gonna write down that. Minus the mean. of all the x values. And then, you're 
going to square each one of those. I know it's a lot of work, but I'm doing it here for you so you know that I have to do it too. Right, after you square all those, after you square all those, you're going to sum them up. Right, and when you do all that, when you do all that, right, you should get a value. Okay, you should get a value. No, I actually did figure out what the x the average here, the average. So, so I just I guess I didn't want to want to write it out, but the x the average of x or the mean of x was actually um, nine point six four. So plug in nine point six four for all those x bars. Okay, that's what you're gonna do there. Okay, and then so once you sum this all up, and I don't know what the number is gonna be when you sum this all up. Right, we sum this all up. Uh, you can put it into right here, right, and multiply by by the slope squared. Okay, and then up here, this is just the average of the or the mean of the y's, right? And so the average y value is zero point one six one. This is the average y's average of all the y values, right? And then this here will be the uh, the corrected average absorbance. Right? And so that was the thing that we had over here. Right? Which is the 0 0.3 Seven three minus zero point nine nine. Oh, sorry, zero point zero nine nine. Right, right there. And so when you do all that and you solve for all these things, okay, what you'll get is x s x or the standard deviation of x equals Zero point one nine one four three three seven one nine eight seven. That's a pretty long number, but of course, as with all uncertainties, we ended at the uh, at the the, the uh, first significant figure, and so when we write out our answer, it will be x equals. 16.5 plus or minus oops that's not a plus or minus there we go plus or minus 0 0.2 micrograms of protein yep so basically cross all those out and round this guy here to Point two, and uh, that's how you solve that problem if you have any questions let me know and good luck on your quiz